The largest single genetic study of Neanderthals has been released in the Nature Journal today. It focuses on a close-knit community of cave dwellers in Siberia who lived 54,000 years ago. They all died in the cave and fragments of their DNA is helping researchers understand a bit about how they lived. Joining me now from Wollongong is one of the study co-authors, Professor Bert Roberts from the University of Wollongong. Bert Roberts, welcome. So just to put this into some broader context first, when did Neanderthals emerge as a species? When did they disappear in, and where did they primarily live? Yeah, thanks Joe. Um, we know a lot about Neanderthals. The first traces we have them might be 430,000 years ago in Western Europe. And the last traces seem to be about 40,000 years ago also in Western Europe. But we know they extended as far as Siberia um, because we have them there from at least 200,000 years ago up until about 50,000 years ago. Okay, so now this study looks at a group of Neanderthals in a particular cave in Siberia. Many bones and tools have been found in that cave over the years. How have you taken this a step further? Very rarely do you get all of the fossils in a very narrow window of time. Usually they're spread over thousands and thousands of years, so you don't get a single glimpse into a family of Neanderthals. But this was a really fortuitous finding where we had so many fossils all in one package of time, maybe only a few tens of years, maybe only a few years long. So really the, the advantage of this study is we're able to look at a, a very small group of people at a snapshot in time, literally a moment in time, frozen there in that Siberian cave. So tell us about this group and how they've lived, what, what you've learned about them and how you've learned that. It's packed full of Neanderthal fossils this site, as well as the stone tools they made and all the animal bones that were left behind as well. There are more than 80 pieces of Neanderthal found at the site. They've done the genetics on 17 of these. And we found 13 individual Neanderthals, 11 at this one site called Chagraskaya Cave. That's a huge number of individuals, but even more remarkably was they're all related to each other. We have a father and a daughter. We have possibly an aunt and an uncle or a grandmother of some of them as well. Uh, and many of the males are very, very closely related related. So there's very little genetic diversity amongst the males, much more amongst the females. And that makes us think that it's females who are moving between communities, whereas the males are staying put. And how does this take further what is known about Neanderthals? We never really knew how Neanderthals operated as a community. Some people had suggested that perhaps the male stayed behind, but there'd never been enough remains found to actually say that confidently. Now we can say definitely females were doing the moving and also the communities were very, very small, maybe only 10 or 20 individuals in each community, certainly out here on the eastern edge of the known range of Neanderthals. So it's a very unusual and rare finding to find such a, a great amount of information uh, from fossils actually at a single point in time. And how many times have you visited this cave yourself and what's it like being an Australian over there in a Siberian cave studying Neanderthals? It's a beautiful part of the world. I mean, it's actually a fascinating site. It's perfectly positioned, looking over a river valley. So if you're a Neanderthal wanting to hunt bison and horse and ibex, this is exactly the place you want to be, just able to look down at the grasslands and go and hunt the herds as they're coming through. But I've been there several times now, five or six times. It's magical every time I go. And how have you developed a particular fascination with uh, Neanderthals? Well, Neanderthals, they also had a sister group called Denisovans, who were equally mysterious. We know much less about Denisovans than we do Neanderthals. But I'm always fascinated in how Denisovans, Neanderthals and ourselves all interacted with each other and the environment around them through time, which is like the last two or three hundred thousand years, up to about 50,000 years ago for Neanderthals and Denisovans. And what's your theory on why the Neanderthals disappeared? Oh, there are lots of theories doing the rounds. Um, the most common one, which I sort of think is probably in the right way, is we just slightly outcompeted them. There's so little difference between us and Neanderthals these days, really, and all the behaviours that they had and we have. But we had a few extra tricks in our toolkit. And so maybe that was enough just to give us a little bit of a competitive advantage. And we forced them out across their entire range, which is all the way from Western Europe out to Siberia. Do you feel kind of sorry for them? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. But of course, we all have Neanderthal in us. Anyone who's right. not an indigenous African has some Neanderthal in their genes at the moment, one or three percent. So they, they live on through us. And they so, do so live on through us. What, what's next for your research? Are you going back to that cave? And just kind of on an interesting point, is it difficult to get back in because of the current situation with uh, what Russia is doing in Ukraine? 
absolutely i mean you know of course during COVID we couldn't get there we'd really hope to get there again this year but of course circumstances didn't allow us to do so i really hope we can because there's always fascinating new finds found at all of the caves in this mm. region every year and so what what do you hope to find next up you've got this major publication happening to happening today where do you think you might be able to go next with your study there are more sites very close to these caves. Not every cave has been explored yet. So it would be fantastic to find some brand new findings in new caves, possibly even another type of human. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, uh, Bert Roberts, so really good to have a chat to you and love your passion. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. All the best.